to my country craft corner how in the world are you guys doing today it is so good to see you again and thank you so so much for stopping back by to see what i'm up to and what i'm up to today is i have a little haul from the minuteman mini mall over there in culpepper virginia chris and i went over there this morning and then i have six questions to answer and that's going to be it for this video today i'm not going to be doing any decorating this is just going to be a chitting and chatting with our lynn video so, uh, I decided I'm going to wait till next week, you guys. Today is Friday. I'm going to take Saturday and Sunday, most likely, off and uh, come back on Monday with my next decorating video, which will be the top of this hutch, probably, or it may be the whole hutch. I'm not sure. Uh, but we are going to start here at the hutch and work our way that direction through the foyer. This is the dining room I'm sitting here in, and we're going to work in the dining room first, and then we're going to work through the foyer, and then we're going to work and end in the living room. I don't know how many videos that will entail. We'll just, we're just going to play it by ear, and we're just going to keep going till we're done, you know, and then I'll do the home tour. So, but anyway, let me get started here. Uh, as I said, Chris and I ran over to Culpepper to the Minuteman Mini Mall, my, one of my favorite haunts, for secondhand uh, dishes is where I, what I usually get there. There are tons and tons of booths that people rent, you know, out and put their wares in, or you know, they go to to thrift sales or you know, estate sales and things like that, and bring back lots of the lots, as in like a lot of dishes, like a a set of dishes, you know. And that type of thing. I saw one set of dishes today for three hundred and thirty-five dollars, and it was a it was a blue and white uh, set. But it wasn't anything that I was real familiar with. And that's not saying anything because I'm not familiar with a lot of things. But uh, I saw that and it was beautiful. But I was like, no, I don't want a whole set of anything. I went looking for some white plates uh, because I've used up all of my white plates, and I don't want to. These are plates that I'm not going to layer with another plate and you'll see what I mean. I'm very happy that I found this and I know some of you will be able to tell me if I got a good deal on this or not. Again, I don't know. I feel like I did, but I don't know. Well, let me explain. So anyway, here here is the uh, the Minuteman Mini Mall. If you are ever in the area or even over in Warrington, if you come from Warrington, that direction down 29, uh, it's a short little jaunt from Wal uh, Warrington over to Culpeper. Uh, but anyway, it's about a half an hour drive for us over to the Minuteman Mini Mall. And there's such nice folks there, so I want to give them a shout out and tell them Arlene sent you. Not that they'll really know who I am. So tell the YouTube lady sent you. I'm not sure they'll know my name. So, but anyway, let me show you what I got. First of all, I... Uh, I already showed you this, and this is actually a, a a saucer for a teacup. I couldn't find the teacups, but I also got one of these. And now this is something that isn't old. This is something that somebody, you know, sells in there. These warm glow candles. Trust me, it is it smells delicious. I did pay thirteen, twelve or thirteen dollars. She took the price tag, twelve or thirteen dollars for it. But it is lovely, and I want to set it on this little blue plate. See that? So, I don't know where I'll set it. Somewhere out in here, or I may burn it, actually, out on the kitchen counter or something like that. But I thought it was, it smells lovely. Like I said, let me open it up. It is a, I got it, finally. It smells so good. Wow. This is, you can go, there's a website here, www.warmglow.com. And this is Blueberry Cobbler. Oh my goodness, and it smells like Blueberry Cobbler. Oh, look at this. How pretty is that? Will that not just go somewhere? That would even be pretty just sitting like on a shelf in here and open up this thing and it would smell all like blueberries. Oh my goodness. But I may like to burn it. I don't know what I want to do. Like, I don't want to burn it. Isn't that terrible? But I would, I, I really did buy it, like, kind of, like, for decor. 
So anyway, I got two of those little plates and I'm not too happy with the vendor uh, for these two plates, to be honest. I don't know that I'll go back to her booth. Uh, she had these two plates piled on top of one another and she had them taped together. Now they only cost me $4, that one that I just put under that candle and this one, but it, I don't know whether you can see it, but it has like a, a little bit of a stain and it's not that big of a deal, but this is the principle of the thing. If I were gonna set this out, this plate would have been on top. I would have put the, the stained or dirty plate on the top so people could see what they're buying. It was taped together. I did not, it was taped like really well. It took me a long time to get the tape off, you know? And then they had the price tag in the middle of that other plate. And so I wasn't too thrilled when I took it apart and saw the staining on it, you know, and, and that's okay. The staining is fine and I'll set it up and, and use it and it'll be pretty. It'll be, it'll be just fine. It's just the principle of the thing, you know? Uh, like I was talking in yesterday's video, I'm, I'm a pretty moral person and I just think that's kind of swarmy, you know, to hide something that, you know, somebody trusting like me and naive like me isn't going to say, oh, well, I need to take these apart, take the tape off, take it apart, look at it, you know. So I won't be going back to this vendor. It's once and done with me, y'all. I'll tell you, I won't be going back because that tells me, that speaks volumes to me about her character or his character, whatever. Not impressed. Just saying. There I am up on my high horse again. I've been up on my high horse more than I haven't this week, haven't I? <laughs> I'm on a roll. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so that was the only thing I bought, just those two plates from that vendor. I got the blueberry candle from somebody else. Uh, and these next five items are from a vendor that I, that I go to frequently. And she had a whole, like, three or four bookcases set up with... 40% uh, off of everything. I'm like, well, that's cool. So I came across this. I don't know whether this was an ashtray or something like that, or whether it was just a candy dish, but it is Fenton. And I think it is absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And I, you know what? I didn't even keep my receipt. I didn't pay. I can't remember how much I paid for this. I think she had it $15 or something. And I got 40% off. It might not have been. But this is what I'm excited. I'm excited about. And as I said, y'all can tell me whether I, I got a little deal here. Okay. She had this, this is a set of four plates and she had each plate priced at $10, but it was in the 40% off, uh, section. So I paid $24 for all four of these plates and it is a series. Apparently it is Fenton. It is a 1776 to 1976. Uh, in God We Trust, all different plates, all different plates. Uh, it says here, issued January 1st, 1975, six, five or six, six, number three. Wait, let me find number one. <laughs> okay, 1776 to 1976. This is Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. Look at this. And as I said, these are Fenton. And you see the writing there? And it has this, I don't know whether you can see the writing. See all that writing on the back? Let me read that to you. We'll see if I can do this. Uh, issue January 1st, 1973. Number one in a series of four. Official United States of America Bicentennial Commemorative Project of the General Federation of Women's Clubs. Uh -huh. In 1975, the people of the American colonies were becoming convinced that they should no longer be subjected to the dictates of a foreign power. Patrick Henry echoed their convictions when he issued the ultimate challenge, give me liberty or give me death. And then it has Fenton down there at the bottom. See that? So these are Fenton plates, you guys. I've never seen this before. I'm sure tons of you have. But I've never seen this. And I was like, how did I get so lucky to find this? Is this a lucky find? I feel like it's a lucky find, you guys. But these puppies are going to go right here in this hutch. Uh, because I pulled out white plates to use over in my other hutch. And I want to set one, two up, up top and then three, four down here. So let me go to plate two. And this one is uh, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness. 
So the same thing is official United States of America, uh, General Federation of Women's Club. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson meet to draft the Declaration of Independence. This document approved on July 4th, 1776, is the most profound statement of the democratic principles of democratic principles overwritten. It announced the birth of a new nation, the United States of America. Fenton. Cool, huh? And there they are. Right in the Declaration of Independence. I love it. Number three is In God We Trust. Looks like Washington praying. I don't know whether that's supposed to be Washington. Well, what does it say? Once declared, independence had yet to be won. At Valley Forge during the bitter cold winter of 1777 and 1778, General George Washington and his troops placed their trust in the creator. Then success fully pitted their courage against seemingly overwhelming odds. Didn't know you were coming for a history lesson today, did you? <laughs> but this is cool to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a dweeb and, and, a, and, a, and, a, geek, and a goober. I'm a goober. You know, I love this stuff. And then one more, it says, proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Uh, freedom. I can't, re I can't even hardly read when this one was made. This one looks like it's been through something here. Uh, proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Two centuries later, the same proclamation still rings. The Liberty Bell, with its simple inscript, inscription, sorry, has become one of the most cherished and revered symbols of American freedom. Let's not forget where we're from, you guys. Let's not forget how lucky we are to live in this country, you know? Sorry for those of you in the United States. <laughs> anyway, I love them. Four of those plates. I love them. I think they're really nice. Sorry, again, I'm up to here with emotion. And this is to do with everything, all of the uproar, you know, which... I don't talk politics on my channel. I don't talk politics on my channel. I don't talk them on Facebook. I don't talk them on my channel. I don't talk them to anybody except from Chris. <laughs> Pretty much. And, and my family, you know. Just not going to go there. Just not going to go there. But anyway, I am thrilled with that, with that find. And as I said, they'll go right here in this hutch. And I think they'll make a pretty addition into this hutch. So... Anyway, that's it. So let's go into some, that's all I hauled. I mean, that's all I bought. I spent 50, I'm still working on my dad's Christmas money. This is still Christmas gifts, you know, from him. <laughs> and see, that's something that I can really show him. That's the kind of thing I like to buy and, and say, the, you got me this, dad. You know, this is a, a pretty special set to me anyway. Whether it's special, really special, I don't, I really don't know. But it's special to me. It means a lot to me. I mean, that's pretty cool. So... That's a really cool thing that I'll be able to, you know, bring him out here and say, you see those four plates right there? And I'll pull them out and let him read them and, you know. Anyway, all right, let's go into some questions now. Let's go to my questions. And all of these questions came in since yesterday's video went up, you guys. So let me, uh, this one is kind of a, a little bit of a long question, but we'll go ahead. Uh, hi, Arlen, just love all of your decorating ideas. I'm trying to get my mobile home decorated back after many years of depression all and a bit of hoarding, oh, trying to make it more homey and appealing. I love the Spotsylvania area. We have fished the Lake Anna many times. I'm very familiar with Lake Anna, yes, as we are avid bass anglers and have made a few friends in the area and some who we've lost all oh, in past years. But the love of the area, but love the area, so peaceful and laid back. If you could, in a reply to me, list some of the local places you like to shop for decor, as I don't know the area well, except for around the lake area. I would so appreciate it, as I do enjoy taking day trips 
and only about two and a half hours trip again and only about two and a half hours trip I guess to here I guess it's two and a half hours to or to Lake Anna which is a little for well, I don't know depending on the way she's coming I don't know uh, again, love your ideas and may God richly bless you and your family and keep you all safe in his arms. Well, thank you so much, Deborah. Same to you. This is Deborah Sincata. Uh, well, from the lake, you can go many different to many different places. You can go to Mineral. You can go to Louisa. You can go to Charlottesville, which is that close. Richmond is pretty close. Or you can come, come back over here to Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania. I can't tell you about Louisa or Mineral because I'm betting they have grown up since I've been out to those towns, you guys. So I really can't tell you what's going on out there. I haven't just been, haven't ridden out there in forever. We used to have a boat and we used to go boating on Lake Anna all the time, but we sold the boat when we moved in here. So we don't, we don't do that anymore. Uh, but here in Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania, we've got a Joann's, we've got a Ross, we've got a Marshall's. We've got Target, we've got, and then on the other side of town, we've got Hobby Lobby and Michael's and and that and At Home and Home Goods and Kirkland's, uh, all everything that you can think of pretty much here in, in Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania. No, so, you know. but yeah, definitely do a little, do a little search there in this area. Richmond, I'm sure has the same stores, if not more than uh, Spotsylvania because Richmond's larger. But uh, we do have all the all the shopping. We didn't used to have anything. We used to have a Ben Franklin in downtown Fredericksburg <laughs> that I used to have to go to. And we also had a Frank's Nursery that every now and again would have a roll of ribbon that I liked or, uh, you know, some, you know, wreath supplies. But it was slim pickings back when I was a beginning crafter, you know? <laughs> All right, uh, so number two. So thank you for that question, uh, Deborah. Hope that helped. Okay, number two from Pamela Willis. Hi, Erlen. I'm curious about the backsplash behind the cooktop. I think it says the gathering place. Is that a picture or a tray or is it is it heat resistance? What is that? <laughs> LOL. I love your videos and your tender heart. That, my dear, is a is a plank picture. I wouldn't say that it is uh, heat resistant, but we've had it up there forever and a day, as you know, and it is fine. I have it Velcroed to the wall using um, command strip Velcro taped on the back and then taped on the, on the uh, backsplash tile, and I have it pushed there so it doesn't move, it doesn't go anywhere. I got it from and that, and it does say, you're right, whatever you just said of the, uh, the gathering place. And it kind of pulls in everything that I like. It has a little pitberry tree in it. Let me see if I can find a picture and I'll put it here. So it is, it's lovely. It really blends well with my countertops uh, because my countertops are called Santa Cecilia Gold. Even though there is a lot of cream and gray and black, that, that picture helps to pull out the gold element which I do enjoy. So, yep, that's what it is. And I just wanted something back there. I wanted something, the tile is pretty, don't get me wrong, the backsplash is beautiful. It's beautiful, but I wanted something a little bit more there. And that's why I have it there. That's what it is. And we, you know, we're never away from the stove. So, and it's never, up, but I've never, it's up from the burners and stuff. And I'll tell you the truth, we use the big burner in the middle the most, regardless, anyway. <laughs> It didn't cost me much either. I think it was like 20 bucks for me and that when I bought it. So, okay, number three. Thank you for that, Pamela. Inquiring minds want to know, huh? <laughs> number three from Becky Mays. I like how you spelled your name, Becky. I think I said that when I commented back to you. Hello, Orlin. This was a great video. I enjoyed the Torrid Hall and your dough ball. It is beautiful. Your little Mav is so cute, and I enjoy each time you post about him. I have a question about your air purifiers. Can you share the make and size you use? Also, are they hard to clean, and how often do they have to be clean? If you've already answered this, I haven't seen it. Thanks uh, for letting us ask you these questions. I don't know whether Chris is in here or not. I don't think he is. I think he's outside with his lawnmower. He's been trying to, his lawnmower is broken. So he's been trying to fix that. 
I can give you, um, I, I would I would suggest that you read the specs on the air purifier itself. I do have them linked, which I gave you the link earlier in my Amazon shop. All of the uh, ones that we have, I have linked in there. And I'm sure that they have all the specifications and whatnots uh, that you would need to know as far as cleaning and if they have filters and uh but uh, Chris takes care of all that, to be honest with you. Uh, make and size are, I have four different ones linked. Hang on, Chris comes back in here. By the time we're done, I'll ask him about how often he cleans. I know he takes the vacuum. We, or I've done this too, take the vacuum over the front of it sometimes because it tends to get a little dusty, you know, right at the intake place. But I don't know whether they have filters in to replace. Let me find them here. The largest one we have is called a Allen Breathe Smart Classic Large Room Air Purifier Medical Grade Filtration H13 True HEPA. So it must have a HEPA filter in it. For 1100 square feet, 99.99% airborne particle remover removal captures allergens and dust in white. So that's the one that's a, that we have sitting out by the black hutch that I'm always trying to hide out of my pictures. This is a chunk of change. This one costs six hundred dollars, you guys. You know, so this but it is supposed to help with allergens and dust, mold and bacteria, pet dander, odor, smoke, and chemicals. You can get it in an array of different colors. It comes in brushed stainless, espresso, graphite, maple, like wood, oak, wood rosewood, gray, and white. Now, why did Chris pick white? <laughs> I might have picked, I didn't realize it came with all those. Anyway, so it says about this item, big rooms, no big deal. Cleans 1,100 square feet every 30 minutes, three times faster than our competitors. Designed to clean, to clean air in large spaces like living rooms, bedrooms, basements, apartments, and open concept areas. Dust and allergy filter. Recommended for dust, allergens, pollen, fur, pet dander, and household odors. The True HEPA filter captures 99.97% of particles up to 3.3 microns, leaving behind clean and fresh air while trapping airport irritants that cause seasonal allergies and asthma. Air quality sensor light, and it gives you goes through the the uh, the different light modes. Uh, ultra quiet quality assurance. So it does, it looks like it does uh, take a carbon, silver carbon air purifier replacement filter, one pack. That's $79 just for the filter. So yeah, it does look like it does. I don't know how often that has to be changed though, but I'm sure it will come with the specifications on the air purifier. Or if you Google it, you could find out more information. Or if my Google walks in, I'll ask him. <laughs> so that is one of them. And I'm not gonna go through the rest of them. That's the biggest and, and, and sturdiest that we have, although the others are lovely too. You can look in the Amazon shop storefront and take a look at all, and take go on Amazon and take a look at all of the specifications. So there we go. Hope that helped you. Becky, hope that helped. <laughs> okay, Pam Glover. Everything looks great. I can't get over how quickly your fingernails. Oh, bounced back after back from acrylic. I wore acrylics for 10 years, and when I had them taken off, my nails were awful. That was about 15 years ago, and they are still not pretty like before I started the acrylic nails. The color of polish you had on tonight was so pretty. I know you you have told us what you use, and I ordered it off of your Amazon store. What is the color you wore tonight, please? Also, I love your hair up. Thank you. And your earrings. Thank you. I must have that pair that you had on tonight. Well, thank you again for being you and sharing so sweetly with us. Y'all stay safe. Well, you are welcome. Thank you. And thank you, Pam, for your sweetness and for always having a sweet word for me and... Uh, Everything, everything. I'm just pull, pulling my fingernail polish. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do this evening, I'll tell you how I touch up my nails. This is the nail polish that I'm, I have on right now, and it says, sit me in the front row. <laughs> I do have this linked in my Amazon shop. It is Essie Couture. I highly, 
highly, one of you guys told me about this, highly recommend Essie Couture. The best fingernail polish by far, even better than OPI, much better than OPI as far as stain quality, much better than Sally Hansen stain quality. It is lovely. Now I've had this on for, before we went to Candace's, so that was Monday. I did this Monday evening. We went to, no, Sunday evening. I'm vivid. Went to, no, wait. When did we go to Candace's? Tuesday. We went Tuesday. So I did this Monday evening. I did this the evening before we left. And uh, you can see they look, and, and I put two coats on and a coat of top coat. I put a base coat on from Essie. They don't have the, the base coat in Essie Couture. I did bring the top coat out here, but it's in a white bottle. Highly recommend that you get both a base coat, use that first, then two coats or three coats even of polish and then a, a, a coat of top coat. But I definitely think they're holding up well, except for that one on this hand. You can see my middle finger there and you can see the tips of my fingers. I, I Because I type so much, you guys, and I must use this finger more than others, this is always the finger that gives me a hard time, you know, that, that one finger. So what I'll do this evening when all is said and done and I'm sitting there watching TV, I'll take the, the polish and I'll tip each of each of the fingers and I'll let that dry a little bit and then I'll put a coat, an extra coat of color and then an extra coat of top coat on my nails and I'll get another week out of them. I'm not even kidding you. So I love this Essie polish and this is a beautiful color. I really have enjoyed this color. This is the first time I've used this color. So sit me in the front row <laughs> and they are my nails. They are not acrylic. They are not an overlay. They, these are my nails and they did recover pretty well from the acrylics. I'm pretty surprised myself, but once that, you know, once they grew out, once where I had the, the, the acrylics, once where they were on my nail grew out, once that damage part grew out, They've, they've rebounded pretty nicely. Uh, I do take a vitamin every day, although I can't take vitamin A, but I do take vitamins every day. Maybe that helps. You know, I don't know. I, I don't drink a lot of milk, but I'm not, I don't skimp on the cheese. <laughs> so maybe that helps too. But there you go, Pam. I hope that helps you. Sit me in the front row. <laughs> they have some great names. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, number five, and then I have one that just came through from Julie in my in my um, studio. So uh, this one is from DB. Do your daughters like to decorate like you do? And I can pretty much say no, <laughs> because not that they wouldn't want to, but they don't have the time. Uh, Kristen is a teacher, and she's working double, triple time now with COVID. And she's working half of her days. She works Monday, Tuesday. Well, she works, excuse me, she works every day in school, but she has students half of her class Mondays and Tuesdays, the other half Thursdays and Fridays. She does a live on Wednesday. She has to, she's, it's the amount of work that these teachers who are teaching, well, remotely, but in school and remotely, it's, it goes beyond my comprehension. I'm telling you, you guys, it's crazy. So she's so busy, she doesn't have time. She's always been like that even before COVID, though. She's been, she's just, uh, loves her job, loves her job, loves being a teacher. And she's got her whole kind of dining room area set up as like an office. She's got like three printers going. We got her a big uh, iMac for uh, Christmas a couple of years ago. She, that is her workhorse. And boy, howdy, she has herself a nice setup now. But, you know, she's been teaching 15 years and she she's amazing. I wish you all could just sit in her class and listen to her teach. She is amazing with these children. So patient, so but but firm, and such a good teacher. She comes, but she's very hands on. Uh, <clears throat> comes up with the best ideas. So that's what her main focus is: is her teaching. So, but she does decorate. I mean, her her place has done a lot in in khakis and kind of. Um, she loves teals and seafoam green and all of those kind of light and airy, very light and airy, pretty colors, you know, it's very well done and very pretty, but she does not like do wreaths and do centerpieces and do all that kind of stuff like I do. 
she's our oldest daughter. Then our youngest daughter, Candace, if yeah. I were gonna have a decorator out of our two daughters, it would be Candace. She has a great eye. She's very creative. Well, both of my girls are very creative, but Candace is very, uh, can, can see things like, kind of like I can. I can see the finished product the way I want it to be. I wouldn't say Kristen is necessarily like that in decorating. With her schoolwork, yes, I think so, but not with decorating. Whereas Candace, I think is, she can visualize what she wants and she can buy what she needs to attain that goal. Her place, you've seen pictures of her place is lovely. They're remodeling it and it is lovely. It's, we all have seen the pictures. You know, a lovely kitchen, they what, you know, knock down a wall and they have a great big eating area enough to cover all 10 of us uh, at Thanksgiving. Big table, uh, you know, lovely little living room. Big, Chris made her the shelving unit to go around her big picture window in there. And they have three bedrooms and two baths. And, you know, it, they really, and she, it is decorated beautifully right now. It has a bike, has Chris's old bike on the wall, but see, they're avid bike riders and things like that. So see what I mean? She's a little eclectic. Uh, so I wouldn't say she decorates like her mama, you know, but not many two people do decorate like I do. I mean, you know, as much as I do is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, I think she has the, if she wanted to, she could. I think both of them could if they wanted to. They're both very talented young ladies. I'm very proud of both of them. Very, very proud of both of them. Okay, so we have, so that's all the questions I got that, that, that I pulled off this morning. So let me go to my uh, studio, my YouTube studio, and see, uh, I had one question from Julie, but let me make sure I don't have more. Nope, the only one I have is from Julie. This is from Julie Monroe. Hey, Julie. Um, hey, Erlen, your powder room turned out so lovely. I didn't remember the three canvases. They look so great. Thank you, honey. I love the beautiful silver tray. Thank you again. I have never had bread pudding. It looks very good. Does it have kind of a custard type texture? It does. And it is wonderful. I am not even kidding. It is so good. Uh, it, it, it's, let's see. Ingredients in it are eggs, like seven eggs. Uh, Chris bought a loaf of Italian bread. Um, cream and milk and vanilla and apples like a granny strip myth. I think he said, well, I don't know. I don't know what kind of apples say truth. I don't know. He didn't say so three or four apples. He's cut up in it. It tastes like apple. It is, it is tastes like apple cobbler only soft. And, um, but it, it but the texture is lovely. I put, um, now see my dad would eat it with milk on it. Probably a lot of people do that you know, older folks who, well, I don't know, a lot of people might do that. Like my uncle and my dad would both put milk on that and, and eat it like that. Warm it up. You know, you eat it warm. I like to eat it warm. You can eat it cold, but I like to eat it warm, warmed up in the microwave. And then I put Cool Whip on mine and I just had a little bowl of it and I'll have a little bowl. Chris and I were very good today at lunch. We went over, we ate at Glory Days, but uh, we eat there now and again one of our other trusted places that we go, when we go over to the Minuteman Mini Mall, we usually go over there to Glory Days. And I had a salad, I had a little cob salad, just a little one. So, and Chris is making us a eye roast. He's got that in the oven. He did it like he did the um, prime rib. He made it the same way. So, which is for another day. I'll tell you another day how he does that. So. But that's in the uh, in the oven, so we're having that, and I think we're just having a little salad, side salad with that tonight. So we're doing really good. We, we, we got to the point where it's like, this is ridiculous. We have got to lose weight. This is crazy. So, but anyway, that's what it is, Julie. It's, it's lovely, absolutely lovely. You would probably love it if you, you know, you look it up, and Paula Dean does a really neat one. Oh, no, that's cobbler. I'm sorry, that's not bread pudding, is it? And that's cobbler. She does a, in her cookbook, she has a really cool cobbler that you start, that you do it all in the oven. You put a, a, like a stick of butter and then milk. I don't remember how to do it, but then a can of pie filling and I don't know what all. Chris cut real apples for this. It's delicious though. He won't say the recipe, but that's pretty much what's in it. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and close this out today. Thank you all so much for stopping in here. Uh, this was just a kind of a chit and a chatting kind of video. No decorating in this one. Just kind of, just, you know, hanging out with the girls and guys here, you know. <laughs> 
So I hope that all is well with everyone. And for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say until next time, and y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.